After building the storage shelves and the workbench, I had quite a bit of leftover material and I wanted to come up with another build. I was trying to think of some different problems that I had and needed to solve. And that was what led me to this project. If you've watched my previous videos, you know that I always have quite a time setting up my miter saw and getting it to work the way that I want to. When you're making a lot of cuts that are gonna be the exact same length, it's really convenient to be able to set up a stop. That way you just have to measure once and you push your board up to that stop and then make your cut and all of the boards should be exactly the same length. If you don't have a decent miter saw table to work with, creating your own little stop can be a little bit tricky. You can see here I've stacked two two by fours on top of each other and then placed a piece of plywood as a stop. And then I'll measure and clamp everything down. Because I have to set up these boards every time I want to use the miter saw means that I can't set any sort of predetermined lengths on there to say, oh, well, this is my 10 inch mark or this is the 15 inch mark. And as you can see here, measuring to the saw blade can be a little bit annoying. Additionally, with this setup, I have to pick up the miter saw and move it to whichever location I'm setting up in every single time. And with its sturdy base, it's pretty heavy. I'll be attempting to solve both of those problems and one other problem that I'll highlight in a little bit in today's build. And of course, in order to build a table, I've got to cut some legs and some cross support pieces. And to do that, I'm using a miter saw. Now let's take a look at the other problem that occurs. You can see here that I've got my two by fours and stop clamped down and one long two by four that I'm cutting to length. And you can see here that I've had to use a box on some saw horses with some scrap two by four pieces in order to support the rest of the work piece. And again, this works, it's just fairly inconvenient. And using an empty cardboard box and some other random scrap pieces isn't exactly consistent. And in the same vein as that problem, when I've set up these two two by four stacked on top of each other with my stop block on one side of the table, and then I set the miter saw adjacent to that, when I have a long piece like this hanging off the edge, I actually ended up running out of room. And you can see I have to drag the table a little bit more just so that I can cut the end of this board off to have a nice even edge. Who needs instructions? If you watch my first video, you know that I mentioned a pocket hole jig would have been quite useful in the construction of that project. I have since then decided to purchase one and here I am messing around with it for the first time. The basics of pocket holes are you line the jig up like this on a piece of wood the supply drill bit comes with a collar and another tool included in the kit is used to set the depth of that drill bit. Clamp the jig to the workpiece, And then the drill bit just goes right into the holes and you drill until you hit the stop. Then you set it all up on the other side of the board or the next board and you do it again and again and well, just a lot of times. Gonna want to clean up as you go. Pocket holes are a very easy form of joinery in comparison to some of the other options and much sturdier than butt joints. Once all the pocket holes are drilled, I'll put the pieces together and then clamp them. And then using the driving bit supplied with the kit, 
and the special pocket hole screws, I will go ahead and get these two pieces joined together. To create a nice solid joint, you'll actually want to use wood glue here, but I didn't have any at this point in the process. Another bonus to pocket hole screws over butt joinery isn't just the stronger joint, but also that all of the hardware is going to be completely hidden. You just need to make sure that in your design and assembly that you have all of the pocket holes facing towards the inside of the piece. I should also point out that while the Craig Jig kit comes with everything you need to get started, it doesn't come with that many screws. Definitely not enough for an entire project, so I had to go to the store and get more. I also got glue. And a giant clamp. It is critically important to use clamps when putting these pieces together before you drive the pocket hole screws in. Otherwise the piece will move around a little bit and you won't get perfectly plumb joints. At this point, I have set my leg assembly upright to make it a little bit easier to clamp it together. As you can see, there's not a ton of space in there when you're trying to drive these interior screws in when you have this long drill bit on your drill. So you may want to plan for that in advance. I got really lucky in that I assembled the shorter sides as two individual units and, and used the longer supports to join the two pieces into the full leg assembly. Okay, the leg assembly is complete. Now let's take it down and see if it's level. Ugh. So I'm fairly confident that because this was built with some of my leftover 2x4s, some of them were relatively twisted, which has led to an imperfect assembly. Or at least that's what I'm going with. I just took a few measurements and then I cut a small piece off of the end of one of the legs. And then I added some material. This is a scrap paint stick, paint stirring stick, to the bottom of another leg. Let's see how that does. It's level. All right, come on, like for that, huh? Anyways, this is the remainder of the 2x4 that I used to create the top of the workbench that I'm currently attaching it to, and I'll just use a piece of this to create the top of my miter table. Clean up as you go. Because one side of my table is longer than the other, I just wanted to measure this to make sure I was putting it together right. I rough assemble it. Then I put down a layer of glue. And once I have it in place, I shoot a whole bunch of nails into it. I give it a light sanding, but nothing too much because I'm pretty sure that the top veneer of this plywood is quite thin. Clean up as you go. Now here I'm using the miter table to build the miter table.
specifically, I'm cutting some spacers to go underneath of the miter saw itself while it's sitting on the table. I wanted this to sit perfectly flush with the workbench so that it could act as my outfeed table. I'm going to blame the fact that I had to add some material and cut some material off of certain legs as the reason why I needed to install these spacers and not because I did the math wrong. That being said, they actually ended up being really useful later on when I tried to make a upgraded stop, but I'll talk about that in another video. And that is just about perfectly level. And that's it, completed. That's where it sits most of the time. When I need to use it, I just pull the miter table and the workbench out and I'm able to set up and cut boards real easy. I really should have put that thing on casters though. Ah, eh, oh well.